Hello everyone, welcome back to another Subnautica. I uh, want to apologize for the two week delay on this particular episode because, well, I got extremely sick and like very, very sick. And I even lost my voice there for about a week. So whenever I was actually starting to feel much better, I uh, I couldn't talk. And as you know, anybody who's watching this series knows that at the beginning of this I was an idiot and decided to do the voiceover after the fact, which was really stupid. And here we are. Also, if you haven't noticed, we have sound now. So at this point I was really excited because I got the... little vehicle here. I'm still trying to wake up, so my brain is kind of half, half awake here, so... I can't even remember the basics of, say, the name of the vehicle. <laughs> For those who have played this multiple times, or just even once, you know that once you get a vehicle, it makes things a bit easier. Well, a lot easier, because traveling time is just cut down. I believe in this episode is where I start to build my base. Now, every time I enter the game for the first time, I have a predetermined area for a base that I built. Reason why is the proximity to thermal, which is one of the big things I use at the beginning for creating energy for my base, which you will see. I don't quite get the thermal in this episode, but you know. That's beautiful. I love these graphics. Oh, I remember what I'm doing. Now I'm looking for the islands. In the game, in order to make a lot of things, you have to scan to get the information to be able to get the blueprint basically to build what you want in the game. So you gotta run around and find things that you can scan. Now one of the big things for habitats is on one of the islands, which is where you need to go. Even though this is an entire water world, there are two distinct areas where just a little bit of a mountain just peeks out at two different areas. Between that and the ship itself that's half exploding in the water, it's the only time you'll ever actually be above ground, or above water I should say. Sorry, I had to make sure my audio levels were right. Make sure my mic isn't picking up the speakers too much for the background noise. I don't want an echo going on through here. I'd pull out some headphones, but 
my kids kind of stole all the good ones. And the only ones I have are crappy ones that don't even have a volume lower. Whatever that word is. Because I can't speak today. Since I didn't have my sound on in the other episodes, I'll let everybody know that voice is the computer on the ship. It gives you hints and things like that. It's a very soothing voice. Jack the guy calls her, I think, Susie. He always comes up with names of, for random names for things. But they all revolve around Susie and Steve. A lot of this stuff that I scan, I don't need to scan, but I choose to do it just to add to that lore. Bulkhead door. Kind of important for your habitat. I confess I've never used lights, or at least that light, the spotlight. these plants that I'm getting involve food and water that continuously grow. It's very important. After a certain point in the game you just get to where you have constant food going and constant water going. When I first played this game I started off with just using all the food as a water source like Uh, that's the voice from one of the previous crash survivors that was here before us, or me I should say. A lot of logs of that. I just stopped talking so everybody can hear. You know, there's, there's still some people out there that have no idea what the story is about and whatnot. I don't want to ruin that for them, so just kind of, just let that go. But, uh, gosh, what was I saying? I don't know, I lost it. It's over. My brain went dead. Oh yeah, when I first started the game, originally, I just stuck with food, using that as both food and water. But, 
after playing it multiple times, you just tend to learn things like actually creating full-on water and so on and so forth. It's I like the dynamic between those two characters. One's a basically bodyguard mercenary. I hate those things. Out of all the beasts and things that can cause death in this game, those are the ones I hate the most. Forget the Leviathan, the biggest freaking thing in this game. Forget that crap, which you'll see later on. Those things are so difficult to kill because they're just little, they nip at your heels. They're like little dogs. Little chihuahuas. Kill them all. But anyway, I like the dynamic of those two characters just because they start out as one man's in charge and the Maida, the girl, who's the bodyguard, is just taking orders and when it comes to survival, whoever has the most experience is the one who makes the decisions basically and I, don't know, I guess as you listen to logs later on they tend to I can't say like each other but they have a mutual respect now that's a purple tablet I won't tell you what that's for you'll have to watch and figure it out That's the reason why I came here. What is that thing? I don't know. Found it outside the stand. Probably another ship. I don't know. Don't go around with that. What is that thing? I don't know. Found it outside in the sand. I'm going to crumble the car of another ship. I've done so when I've never seen it. It's going to be scratched. Not the first people. Don't fool around with that. It might be worth something. You stand down, Chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. We're not the first people to come to this planet. People? Maybe. Could be aliens. Could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure. We ain't going to find out. Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. Clearly, the other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut price mercenary are commissioned on the deal. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had Mida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Mida. She says the weather's going to turn. Go from bad to work. I say she's finding excuses she to risk. I imagine she's not she going to weaken her life by her physical altercation when she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. This planet won't cause us any new problems. Our one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. And this part of space that could be months or even years. I'll stop being in charge with 
something. I said wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. You stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourselves. Hey, Chief. Chief, what? what? Do you know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of stormwater? Or how to conjure heat from the air? I know how to prioritize. I'm just saying, if that's so, what's your boy's life going to be today? If tomorrow you're going to be so hungry, you start wondering what it tastes like. Let's get to the plants. Son, we'll go deal with the plants. Do you understand me? No, it's you, Tom. Tom, I'm not going to go Now, for people that don't know, uh, whenever you pick that stuff up, they sometimes give uh, coordinates to extra things that you can scan and learn more about the story, history, things like that of what happened to people. Uh, it's not always a good idea to go for that. Like right now, the coordinates that they gave. You can go down there, but your ship that you currently have is not quite ready to go down there yet because of due to depth, which you'll learn as the game progresses whenever I play. For those who have constantly played this game or know about this game, period, uh, I do take my time. I'm interested in getting it right, not getting, feeling the need to rush through it. There's my thermal. It's where my home, my base of operations always goes. And right down there is the coordinates. Again, keep in mind all the stuff that I'm scanning I'm going to be able to use to my advantage later on in the game, or early on, depends on where I'm at as I build. Now that door needs a laser cutter to cut through. I do not have a diamond, so I can't make the laser cutter. Also, I don't think I'm fully I fully scanned one yet. For a full, I'm mean like two thirds in or one third in or something like that. So this game is paced, I think, very well. You you really can just go into this game and just finish it in less than an hour, or you can absolutely take your time and just enjoy it for what it is. I like to enjoy it for what it is. Are you tired of drinking the same old gas station coffee? Do you want a damn good cup of coffee? Maybe check out some nice artwork in the meantime. Then you should check out Under the Black. Under the Black is a locally owned and operated coffee shop and consignment art dealer based out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We use the finest beans available to create our signature coffee blends directly from our kitchen to your door. 
swing by our site and check out not only our coffees, but also our products and consignment art. I promise you won't be disappointed. Check us out at the site below. That sound is from the reef backs that are above me. They sound like whales. I think I previously stated that I just didn't have the sound on, but. Another cool thing about uh, me creating the base where I put it is that reef backs always swim by, and some of them get really close. I had one of them actually hit my base. There's a little life pod. See that right there. My vehicle isn't upgraded to a lower depth module, which you can get later on or early on, depending on how fast you want to go. And uh, that stops me from going to the coordinates for the Bart Torgal thing that they that they gave me early earlier. Just because when you go past the depth level, your vehicle starts to crush itself. Now when you're first starting out, the last thing you want to do is have your vehicle destroyed. Warning. Maximum depth reached. Later on, it's no big deal. You can make them whenever you want, but right at the beginning, this is my baby. It's all I got. I don't want to do it again. I don't want to collect resources and build that thing. Forgive me if uh, the screen is jumping a little bit. I'm noticing myself. Uh, a lot of it has to do with this is a big file in my video editor, so it's kind of jumping a little bit. And I notice the sound is not synced. It's off by maybe half a second, but I'm not going to. I'm afraid if I diddle with it even just a little bit, it's going to mess it all up.
And here's where building comes into play. Now it's not that difficult to build things, finding resources, using them, and so on and so forth. It's just you forget the smallest things whenever you're building. When you're first starting off, you don't have a full-on collection of, that's the radiation from the ship that exploded. Um, you don't have a full stockpile of materials that you can use. So at the beginning when you're first building, you're just collecting as you go till you can start creating lock uh, boxes and things like that so that way you can store That's a Reginald. Reginald is your best friend. I always collect them. New creature discovered. Thirty seconds. Welcome aboard, Captain.
And sorry about that silence there. Uh, I'm doing this early in the morning, and I was trying not to have my wife, for you to hear my wife brushing her teeth or things like that, just unnecessary stuff, so I just kind of muted that for a little bit there. Uh, earlier, and there wasn't really much going on, I was just, it was my pursuit of finding lead so that way I could make these. To me, this is kind of like a flag at the start of building, just so that way you're like, hey, this is all my, this is where all my stuff's going to go. I use it for a multitude of things, but also for integrity on the hull, which you'll see as time goes on. I also throw grow beds up there outside just because, well, you need resources constantly at your disposal later on in the game. So I set myself up right at the beginning. I've done this mul multiple times, so... I couldn't do that. Forget the stank weed. But, uh, yeah, also, whenever I build this first structure, I always have a predetermined blueprint, something that I always build the exact same way over and over again, and then I change things up everywhere else that I go. But just the foundational base, my first base, is always the same thing. I know it sounds kind of boring, but it really worked for me the several times that I've done this, and I just grew really fond of the way I built it. Everybody has their own style. I have mine as well when it comes to the first base. We just go from there. Once again, I ignore the radio because I'm not interested in the storyline or doing stuff currently in the game. I'm interested in building. I want to get my foundation, set my mark, let everybody know on the planet that I'm here. Except for Leviathans. I don't want them to know I'm here. See what I mean? They always forget something small, tiny. Granted, I could build the the room, but I still need to be able to open it with a hatch to get inside, and I'm missing a single quartz, which is just, just silly. I always hate the beginning of the game because your inventory is always full because you don't have a lot of st stocking ability. You don't have lockers and stuff, so running back and forth to do something is really annoying. But it gets better. It all gets better. Everything becomes streamlined over time, and then you stop thinking about survival and just start thinking about all the cool stuff that you can do.